Hey, I'm Chris Metzen with Blizzard Entertainment. Uh, we are at the Nucleus Gallery for the uh, opening night of the Art of Blizzard uh, Gallery Show. So Chris, where do you draw inspiration from where, when it comes to Warcraft and the world of Warcraft? Well, I think, uh, you know, Warcraft is shaped by a, a lot of different visual styles. Um, certainly back in like 1993, 94, when we started building the first Warcraft games, uh, it was anything from like, you know, Conan, Lord of the Rings, you know, uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, all the kind of classic fantasy tropes, but with kind of a 90s comic sensibility, um, you know, hyper proportionate, super colorful characters. Um, I think it was born of just kind of all sorts of weird things uh, that we were into back in the day. Um, you know, Sam Didier, the uh, series art director, really kind of loved just hyper proportionate, super colorful uh, kind of gimmicks. So that really proved to be the backbone of the franchise. Even to this day, I think you still get really super colorful vistas and, and you know, super mighty characters. And 20 years gone, it's, you know, a lot of continuity there. And how does this compare to the characters and environments you've created for the StarCraft universe? I think StarCraft, uh, from the get-go, almost as a reaction to what Warcraft was, uh, tried to be a little more gritty, a little more realistic. Um, right around that same time, uh, wide use of kind of uh, 3D rendered sprites started to become the, the big new thing in the games industry. So you could actually shoot models with like actually directed light on the texture map. So StarCraft always kind of had more of a, a realistic look um, that I think really helped to contrast the two universes, right? Science fiction wants to feel a little more rusty, a little more gritty. So I think they've always been uh, um, very distinct that way. And what inspirations were there for the, for the Diablo franchise and how did that evolve? I mean, ultimately, you know, the Diablo universe was developed by uh, a company called Condor Entertainment that would become, you know, one day Blizzard North. Um, and I think those guys were really turned on by more, um, kind of taking a, a much uh, darker spin through, you know, kind of like, like a European Gothic type underworld, right, with dungeons and things like that. And those are really kind of art kits uh, and, and motifs that Warcraft hadn't really touched on up until that point. Um, and I think they felt that that gave them a, a very, very distinct sense of, of distinction from uh, a distinct sense of distinction. I think they felt that that really made their, uh, their game very, very distinct from you know, what we've been doing with StarCraft and Warcraft. And what role has advances in technology played in bringing your game art to life? You know, I, it's an interesting question. I think ultimately technology keeps arcing up and up and the benefit of it is at a video game level that you can have higher res texture maps and you can have you know, more polygons in a model and you can more points of animation and articulation. And while that's all wonderful, um, what we've always really tried to do, uh, regardless of, of how crazy you can get with the art, is try to remember that it's, it's, the, it's the simple things, right? It's the foundational things, you strong colors, strong personality, super detailed costumes, and just remembering that you're telling a story with, with a character or a tank or, a, or an environment. Um, so that ultimately, as the technology allows you to do all crazy stuff, um, you still have to remember what, 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 what the idea you were gunning for in the first place and, and, and remember that how it fits into the matrix of your world building and your storytelling. And, um, you know, I, I think obviously the art's much better these days because of technological advancements, but the, the, the soul remains the same, you know. Uh, how have you seen video game art evolve as an art form? Uh, it's interesting with video game art. I mean, ultimately, from the realm of illustration, you know, doing concept art, doing kind of, you know, production paintings and things like that, it's not all that different than it was, you know, 30 years ago. Um, but obviously on the technological end, um, the worlds we can build um, and the, the level of you know, immersion and textural reality that can be accomplished these days is obviously much higher than anything we could have done back in the day. Um, you know, relative, you know, from doom to far cry, I mean, obviously we're in a realm where these environments and these worlds can be very convincing. Um, and so, geez, I think like, anything's possible these days. And again, it's just remembering that that innate escapism and the, the fantastical experience ultimately is what people are signing up for. So even though you can render things that almost look real world convincing, um, remembering that people ultimately just want to be transported. They want to have that fantastical experience and kind of you know, balancing that against the, the realism that can be achieved with the you know, illusion of, of displacement that is the want. And what do you feel it says that museums now feature video game art? Oh, it's crazy, man. I mean, it's, it, it's hard to gauge. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a dinosaur for this industry now. I'm, a, I'm an old man now. So, but the idea that this is the culture now, right? You know, back in high school, you know, I was a shameless geek playing D&D &D at the lunch tables and hoping no one found out, right? Nowadays, 
kids are coming up everybody games right my folks game on their on their on their smartphones i mean gaming has just become you know part of the the, the texture of our culture and so to see gallery shows and things like that and see these things being celebrated you know broadly in the pop culture is man <laughs> i have a number of emotional responses to that i mean not the least of which is it feels great to be validated <laughs> you know so it was one of the geek culture like it's killer right just to see people interested you know that people that wouldn't necessarily even think of themselves as a geek but like there's no distinction anymore they just go oh yeah that's what's going on that's what the world is now and that's uh that's just an amazing feeling you know